Okay, it's live. Okay. Good luck, everybody. Um, tonight, we're going to recite Slichas soon. And before Slichas, it's customary to have a little Fabrengen. I'm going to have God willing a little Fabrengen later tonight as well. But uh, never have, never can Fabrengen too much. As Gemara says, Rav Chlam Sum There's always room for something that is delicious. So before I share the story tonight, I um, I want to share an amazing um, teaching um, in the Tehillim chapter 119. There is a uh, pasuk, Ta'isi Kaseivet. I was lost like a wandering sheep, like a lost sheep, and. Uh, the Pasuk emphasizes how Hashem recognizes that we have challenges and that Hashem doesn't uh, grade us all the same way. And Hashem realizes who we are. And, and the Rebbe emphasized how the Jews should never say to themselves that they're hopeless, they can never come back, because Hashem recognizes in each of us that we were put in a situation to be like a lost sheep. And therefore, Ba'ke Shavdecha, the Pasuk says, Hashem looks for a way to bring us in. Hashem knows that he puts us, that we're in a situation where there's, where there's challenges and there is not, there's no perfection other than heaven. And therefore, we say to Hashem, Hashem does, Ba'ke he looks for a way to bring us in. So I'm going to share with you tonight an incredible story about Rabbi Yosef, the wagon driver. And in this story, you'll see how Hashem causes one thing to happen after another just for the purpose of helping and bringing back one Jew closer to Hashem. There was a man named Ephraim Zalman. He was a very uh, brilliant man. He was known in the entire region in, in Russia where he lived as the preeminent scholar. And he had heard when he was 15 years old about the greatness of the Alter Rebbe. And he decided he wants to visit the Alter Rebbe and to learn from the Alter Rebbe. But after his visit to the Alter Rebbe, he was very down because he didn't know anyone who was as great of a Torah scholar as himself. And he was in the big leagues. And, and here, speaking to the Alter Rebbe, he saw someone who was beyond himself. And that, put, that made him feel, that made him feel um, terrible. But when he got back and he spoke to his teacher, his name was Rav Ram Zev, who Rav Ram Zev told him, there's only one person in the world who knows more Torah than you, and that is the Vilna Gun. So you shouldn't feel terrible about your Torah knowledge. You're doing really good. That's what, that's what Rav Ram Zev told Rav Ephraim Zalman. There was another student of Rav, Ephraim, of Rav Ram Zev, whose name was Rav Yasef. Rav Yasef was... Um, moved to the city of uh, Meshachovitz and he lived there for 15 years and while he's living in Meshachovitz it was Cheshvan month of Cheshvan, rainy month he if someone was passing by his town and he um, uh, Avram, want to close the door? Avram Avram, Avram, want to close the door? So um, he um, moved to Meshachovitz for 15 years. And um, while he was there, there was a, a, a traveler who needed a place to stay because it was the rainy season and he couldn't continue his journey. And he stayed at the Rebisa's house for a long time. This traveler was a student of the Baal Shem Tev, the Maggit, and he made a great impression on this Rabbi Yosef, and he told Rabbi Yosef that most of his knowledge in Torah, which was quite impressive, he had learned from the Maggit, the Liyajna, as the Alt Reb was called in those days, and Rabbi Yosef was really impressed, and he decided that one day he wants to travel and visit the Alt Reb himself. But three years passed without him doing anything about this, but one time while he's listening to the Torah class of his teacher, 
Rabbi Ephraim Zalman, uh, Rabbi Ephraim Zalman mentions in the class that 15 years ago, I heard a Torah thought from this, the Magad of Yajna, and he explains many questions that the Ravid asks on the Rambam. And I want to share with you the incredible teaching that I heard from this, from the Magad of Yajna, as Alter was called in those days. So when Rabbi Yosef heard how his teacher, who was not at all um, into the Hasidic lifestyle, but still was so impressed with the Alter Rebbe's teaching, and he heard the same thing from this passing um, traveler that that, infor- that inspired him, I got to go to see this guy. And he actually uh, traveled in the summer of um, in the story in 17, 17, 1777, he traveled to see oh, the Alter one second, put someone else on mute. Okay, so, um, okay, so he um, he went to visit the Alter Rebbe, and every two or three years, he would visit the Alter Rebbe. The Alter Rebbe told him, um, after his wife passed away, his uh, brothers-in-law gave him, wanted to give him his, his rightful share of the inheritance of their, of his father-in-law, and, his, and he didn't want to accept it, but they made a court case. Interesting how people fought in those days. It's such a He didn't want to accept his inheritance, and they, had to, had to, they, they demanded in court, in the Jewish court, that he should accept the inheritance for the benefit of the soul of his father-in-law. And the court ruled that they were correct and he had to accept 500 golden coins uh, in order to give his father-in-law's soul rest. And he put the money aside. He gave uh, 50 gold coins to Saka and 150 he gave to uh, a loan fund. Another 150 he entrusted to various businessmen to support himself. And he himself became a teacher of... Um, teacher of, of children, he would he would uh, spend two months eating at, at the homes of his students. Uh, each, he had three different students and he would go to one student's home for two months to eat, another student to their home to eat. And uh, he, he was, his wife had passed away, he was living by himself. So he, he visited the Alter Rebbe in the year Tov Kuf uh, Samach Dalet. And the Alter Rebbe asked him, if he had memorized the entire Mishnah. And the author of it told him the word Mishnah has the same letters as the word Nishama. And he should learn the Mishnayas, he should memorize the Mishnayas, and he should marry someone who is able to have children, and God will bless him with a child. And for the benefit of his soul, the author of it said, it is better for you to be a wagon driver than to be a rabbi. That's, that was a cryptic message that he got from the Alter Rebbe. So he, uh, he came back home and he married the daughter of a certain Rebbe Sanal the Seifer. And she had this uh, store. And then with the store, they, she ported, supported herself and her husband. And uh, Baruch Hashem, he um, had a child. We named Abizelig. And a delegation visited him from the town of Alepli. Delegation said to him, we would like you to, be- to become our rabbi. When they said that to him, he suddenly remembered the words of the Alter Rebbe uh, years before that it's better for his neshama to be a wagon driver than, than a rabbi. So he realized that the time has come to fulfill the words of the uh, Alter Rebbe. So he went to, you know, he was, he was first you know, hesitant, he should really become a wagon driver. And now he's, he's 70 years old. He had spent 50 years studying Torah. He was a Torah genius. He was, his advice was sought from all over um, the whole region. And now he's going to become a wagon driver. He wasn't really sure he wanted to do this, but he, he courageously ventured to the stable where his friends were, were, everyone recognized him in the town as a great Torah scholar in the city of Gnesh 
And when he came to the stable, they all greeted him. Rabbi Yosef, what are you doing here in this, in this uh, stable? What brings you here? Do you want to go to Lapley? Do you want to go to Vitebsk? Where should we take you? Where are you going? He says, actually, I want to learn how to become a wagon driver. And they didn't believe it. They thought he must be kidding them. And one of his students who happened to be there said, Rabbi Yosef, it would be better for you to learn Hal Hilchos Hagala than to be a Balagala. Hilchos Hagala are the laws in the Torah about koshering an item, which are called Agala. Hagala. And it's similar to the Hebrew word Agala, which means wagon. It's better to you learn the laws of, you're much better at those laws of, of koshering items than you are at driving a wagon. You don't want to do this. And every, all the wagon drivers who got the joke laughed. But there was one wagon driver who said, listen, Rabbi Yisif is not coming here just to uh, play around with us. If he is coming to this town, if he's coming to the stable to talk to us, there must be a reason. And he said, he told Rabbi Yisif, I'll teach you how to do this. Come to me, I'll teach you how to do this. So Rabbi Yisif and this man, Rabbi Yitzchak, who was the wagon driver, he tries to uh, teach him how to do this. And, he, and Rabbi Yisif doesn't know the first thing about uh, driving a wagon, and he uh, slips and falls in the mud. And the Friedrich Rebbe, this whole story, is, the previous Rebbe writes this, every detail of the story. And he says how the horse's uh, tail almost blinded his eyes. And he was completely broken and dirty. And he went to his house to change his clothing and then go to Shul to give his daily class. After the evening service, they came over to Rabbi Yosef and people had heard, is, is this true that you went to uh, learn how to, you, you went, you wanted to become a wagon driver or something? Imagine a 70 year old guy who was, who was a Torah scholar. And, he, and they asked, is this really true? Hey, what's going on? He didn't answer to him and he went home. When he came home, he found his wife crying. And he also started to cry, thinking to himself, what has happened to me? What am I doing to myself? And he made a decision. No matter what happens, I am not going to be a wagon driver. And he went into um, his, but as he's thinking, I'm never going to be a wagon driver, all of a sudden it rang in his ears the words of the Alter Rebbe. The Alter Rebbe said, it's better. And, and he remembers that all the words of the Alter Rebbe were fulfilled. The Alter Rebbe told him to marry someone, to have a child. And he had a child. And now they asked him to become a rabbi. And now it was a time he realized this must, everything the Alter Rebbe says happened. It must be that it, it, he is meant to do this. So he was so confused and all of a sudden entered his mind, the words of our sages, to consult your wife. And he went into his, um, he went to his, uh, his wife was in their son's room, Abazel's room, and his wife was leaning against the crib and she was bawling, she was crying. And she felt, he felt so bad for her. And uh, he had wiped away her tears. She didn't want him to see that she was crying. She wiped away her tears, and uh, she and, and she put on a face as if like she's fine, but she wasn't. And um, and she says to him, um, I, you know, she greets him, and he says to her, "I, I want to tell you what's going on." She had heard apparently that he had gone to the stable, and she thought he, her husband must have gone crazy. So he said to her that there's, there's two there's two sides of this question. On the one hand, I did hear from the Alter Rebbe all of these different things. They all came true. And the Alter Rebbe said that, that I should become a wagon driver. On the other hand, you know, I'm right now in this time in my life, I'm already, already, uh, I'm already uh, 70 years old and, and uh, it doesn't seem that this is the right thing to do at this time. So his wife, without thinking for a second, she said, this is what the Rebbe told you? She said, you can't even wait one day. And she said, I have a necklace, a diamond necklace. She had these two pins with gold thread. And she said, sell my gold necklace, sell my diamond necklace, sell the thread, sell these pins and buy a horse and wagon. And that time when they were speaking was already getting close to midnight. Every night Rabbi Yosef, would say tikkun chatzais. He would say the special prayer that many tzaddikim say to, to mourn for the temple, to ask Hashem to bring Mashiach. So he started saying tikkun chatzais, 
And he started crying and he's thinking to himself about his personal destruction of his own base of English, how he himself is in a situation where he is destroyed spiritually. He is unable to build his own temple. He has to now leave and always learning and always praying and being a leader. And he's thinking about like, he is, people call him Rabbi Yosef Mashbir Bar, Yosef, the one who gives everybody straw. That the Torah says about Yosef Atzadik, the child, Yosef Atzadik, when he was a viceroy of Egypt, he supplied it straw for the whole world. So they called that, they gave that title to Rabbi Yosef as well, because he was the one that everyone counted on for advice. They said from now on, instead of calling him Rabbi Yosef, the uh, Mashbir Bar, or Rabbi Yosef, the Baal Hasfara, the one who has the, all the great logical ideas, from now on they're going to change his name to Rabbi Yosef Baal Agala, Rabbi Yosef the wagon driver. And he, uh, he was very, very down. He was very broken. In general, he spent a lot of time every day learning and davening. He spent, the previous writes his whole detail, all of the, uh, whatever he did during the day. He spent two or three hours every day davening. On Shabbos, he spent another four or five hours just himself davening. He would then spend three hours after davening every day studying Gemara and Rambam. And the next day, after he finishes his prayers, he wanted to learn, but he could not learn. He was crying. And he was crying not just because he has to, he also is embarrassed of himself. Look at his wife. His wife doesn't know, and it doesn't, he was studying Hasidus for 40 years. He was close to the Altar Rebbe for 35 years. And here he has now had the chance to get no first hand who the Altar Rebbe is. And still, despite his knowledge, his intimate personal knowledge of the Altar Rebbe and his greatness, his wife doesn't have any of that knowledge, yet she has this pure faith in that tzaddik without a question, without a second. And she's right away selling her, her precious jewelry just to help him buy a wagon. He, was, he cried not just because he had to become a wagon driver, he was embarrassed. Of, he, he's supposed to be on this spiritual level, you know, knowing Hasidus and everything, and yet he doesn't have he doesn't have even simple faith. He remembered when that guest had visited him that so long before, that guest who had been a student of the Baal Shem Tov had visited him, and he explained to him the difference between the words emunas chacham emunas sadikim, faith in the wise and the faith in a righteous person. Now, the previous Rebbe writes these words, doesn't say exactly what he's referring to. He's actually very happy to see this because I always am bothered by the word in the Gemara, faith in the wise. Because though that expression doesn't really denote what it means to trust in a tzaddik, you're not trusting someone because they're wise. You're trusting someone because they have the spirit of Hashem. So this visitor had told him about this. There's a different difference between trusting wise people versus trusting a tzaddik. And he's thinking to himself, that all he's gone through in these all these years, since he's seen the Alter Rebbe and since he learned Hasidus and how he visited Lubavitch and visited Lyajna and Sisi the Alter Rebbe. And he was so distraught that he couldn't learn. He just couldn't, couldn't open his mind to learn it all. And he was so embarrassed how he didn't have faith in his simple wife. His wife had such simple faith in God and faith in the tzaddik more than him. And he just, he just, he just couldn't um, come to himself. And he remembered that he has... There was a wagon driver named Yabir Shua who lived in Veliz. And this wagon driver was very respected Hasid. And he, he, he knew this guy, although he's a wagon driver, he knew a lot of Torah. And uh, maybe he should go to Veliz and learn from Yabir Shua, Chaim Yeshua, excuse me, learn from Chaim Yeshua how to be a wagon driver. So when he got to Veliz, he discovered that Rabbi Chaim Yeshua actually wasn't there. He had traveled to the city of Nevel. Uh, he was a wagon driver, he went to Nevel. And this Rabbi Yosef decided he's gonna go to Nevel too. And he came to Nevel, all the Hasidim were so happy because Rabbi Yosef was famous among all the Hasidim, he had many friends. He was famous for his knowledge and his wisdom and all the oh, Rabbi Yosef is here. And if I bring with them, he shared stories with them. All the Hasidim were having the best time of their life. Rabbi Yosef is here. Wow, it's a party. And every meal of Shabbos, he was entertaining everyone and sharing with everyone. And everyone loved it. Everyone loved it except for him. He's thinking tomorrow, I'm going to have to put on the uh, clothing of a wagon driver. I'm not going to, what, what, is, what am I doing to myself? And everyone, everyone except for him had a wonderful Shabbos, that, that Shabbos Neville. 
except for him. And after Shabbos, he went over to this Rabbi Chaim Yeshua, and uh, he was really distraught because he was thinking, he, he was watching Rabbi Chaim Yeshua over Shabbos, and he was thinking how respected Rabbi Chaim Yeshua is, and the Hasidim call him with such, at such venor, at such a, um, respect for him, but he won't get that respect from now on. He's thinking from now on they're going to call me Rabbi Yisrael, the wagon driver, and it bothers him. So he comes the next morning into the shul, he calls over behind the shul, and he says, I want to tell you something. The reason why I'm here is actually only for you, because I have something that I want to talk about with you. And they went into a room, they closed the door, and he said to him, I have Baruch Hashem all that I need. My wife has a great store, and we're making money, everything's fine, but I have to um, become a wagon driver for a private reason, and I want you to teach me how to do this. Chaim Yeshua's eyes are getting bigger and bigger. Like, what is this guy talking about? And he just can't hold himself in. He says, what's Rabbi Yisif? What are you doing? Who is forcing you to, do to become a wagon driver? Go back to Neshekovitz. Go open your Gemara. Open your Tanya. Rabbi Chaim Yeshua was someone who was, you know, he, he knew the whole Tanakh by heart and Tanya by heart. And he would, he would, um, he would really um, say words of Gemara and Tanya and while he was traveling in his wagon and Ariyasev was like looking up to him like he wants to learn from him but, but, but right away he said, are you out of your mind? Why in the world would you want to become a wagon driver? So Ariyasev couldn't hold himself in and he just broke down and he poured his and started crying and, and then he, he stood up. The way the Hasidim were in those days, the way the custom was in those days, I know, if this is, I know if this is still the custom or not, but um, the custom was when, when the Hasidim would repeat a teaching from directly that they had heard from the, from the Rebbe, they would stand up. So he stood up. Actually, no, the priests were right. This is a custom Hasidim in those days. So they apparently it's not the custom nowadays. So he stood up and he said that the Alter Rebbe told me that it's better for my neshama to be a wagon driver than to be a rabbi. And he described all that had happened to him. So then Rebbe Yeshua said to him, so why are you crying? Why are you crying? I'll teach you. Of course you have to become a wagon driver. You should be so happy. You're able to do the will of the Alter Rebbe. You're able to do the mission of the Alter Rebbe. You're lucky. You're so fortunate. You get to be a wagon driver. I will tell you what to do. Here, um, you'll give me your, his, he had a little bit of money that his wife had given him to buy the, the horse and wagon. And I'll help you buy the horse and wagon. Of course, we should do this. So Rabbi Yisif had like a thought to himself, you know, I have an idea. Instead of me being a wagon driver, how about this? I will participate in the costs that you have as a wagon driver, and I'll accompany you from time to time on the wagon, and I'll be a wagon driver like that. Chaim Yeshua said to him, listen, you don't know what's going on. The Alter Rebbe gave you specific instructions, and his instructions were very clear. It's better for your neshama to be a wagon driver. This is about you becoming a wagon driver, not about participating and hiring someone else. You have to become a wagon driver. And he realized that he was just meshucha um, atzma. He was just like um, he miss he miss he was made a mistake because he did he just was because of his own dignity. He didn't want to do this, and that's why he interpreted the words of the Alter Rebbe erroneously. So he went with this with this Chaim Yeshua. And he taught him how to become a wagon driver. But he, and he started. He started off on, after a, a couple of days. He, he learned. He learned how to hold the saddle and the horse and the and, and the, put the reins on. He learned all the, the whole thing. And he started his profession. But he made a decision to himself. Made a rule for himself. He's not. Whenever he guys comes to a city, he's not going to go too quickly. He's going. When he comes to a city, he's going to spend all day learning and davening. That's what he did. Uh, it's a long story. I'll tell you five minutes more of the story. Uh, I wanna, uh, the, 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 this story is actually, uh, you'll see. So he, he, had, he went to a certain hotel in a city called Sena. That At that time, the Alter Rebbe had passed away already. And the Hasidim had crowned the Alter Rebbe's son, the Mitla Rebbe, as the Rebbe. For whatever reason, Rabbi Yosef wanted to visit the Mitla Rebbe, but he'd never been successful in seeing the Mitla Rebbe. 
He never traveled from the Torah that till that point. He's staying at this hotel. There was a graph. A graph was like a nobleman named Biatchkovny. Biatchkovny was traveling in that region, and <clears throat> one of the members of his entourage had got stuck in set. He had to, he had to do a certain mission for the graph in uh, Senna. And he stayed in this Jewish hotel in Senna with the base of the So the owner of the hotel introduced Rabbi Yisab Neshekovitz to this Jew who was estranged from his Judaism. And he told Rabbi Yisab, he told this man, this guy is a wagon driver. Oh, great, a wagon driver. What time are you leaving tomorrow? He said, uh, after davening. He's like, I don't daven. I'm not into davening. doesn't matter to me. You could daven. You don't want to daven. doesn't really. I'm not into that stuff. Just what time are you going? He says, he tells Rabbi Yisif, I got to get know what time you're going so I can get up and eat and, and bathe. So I'll be ready for you when you want to go. So Rabbi Yisif says, and you also have to daven. He says, daven will leave for you. Just tell me when you're going. So the, the, the owner of the hotel tells this guy, you could eat and drink and sleep and bathe. This guy's not going till the afternoon. This guy, he gets up in the morning. He takes a long time with his prayers. I know his routine already. Afternoon? What are you talking about? You go and get me a wagon driver. And you go into the, in the town, find me somebody. I need to leave at 5 a.m. Okay, no problem. So this man goes to sleep. Rabbi Yisif, as I mentioned before, he used to stay in Katsais every night. So he gets up and he writes, lights his candle. He sits on the floor. And he starts crying and crying. And he's very bitter about his situation, how he's left Torah and prayer and had to be in this cycle. He has to do this wagon driver thing. It bothered him. And as he's crying and crying, this guy wakes up and he remembers all about his youth. The previous time the right describes in detail exactly what happened to this person. Every step of the way, how he had left Judaism, how he had a friend who was very knowledgeable in Torah who had left Judaism. And he, and he describes in detail how he was married to a Jewish woman. He had children. He left his wife and children and he married a non-Jewish woman and he had children with a non-Jewish woman. And he had become a very respected part of the elite um, uh, class of the, the, the non-Jewish noblemen. And, but he's watching Rabbi Yisif and he, is, he has a thought of tshuva. And he wants to, and, he, and the next day he, he asked Rabbi Yisif for his tefillin. And this Hashem Malay was so distraught that he got literally sick with fever. And... I'll leave the rest of the story for you to read. And Mitzvah to look it up online. But he became so sick with fever until he discovered, um, long story short, in Rabbi Yisif, uh, eventually brought this man, the Shlomo Leib, to the Mittler Rebbe. The Mittler Rebbe gave this person an entire book. He wrote a whole book just for this, just for this uh, Shlomo Leib. It's called Pekeach Ivrim, Open the Eyes of the Blind. He made this book just for him. And it, it's a path of Teshuvah. It has a very interesting instruction for people who wanted to do Among other things, the Rebbe says, interestingly, to say, in your hand, I deposit your, my spirit every night, say three times. When you make up in the morning, the first thing you should do is say chapter 51 in, in, in Tehillim. Whole order of how to do Teshuvah. Anyways, the Mitzvah Rebbe then speaks to, to this Rebbe Yasef. He tells Rebbe Yasef, my father was by me. My father said that that Yosef, the wagon driver, has fulfilled his mission. And he's fulfilled his mission. And he then the said to him, my father took a Torah scholar and he made him into a wagon driver to help another do to do, do, do teshuva. And now he's commanding me to take a wagon driver and turn him into instead a mashpia, a Hasidic uh, uh, leader, a mentor. So you should now uh, uh, become a mentor for the Hasidim of Meshachovitz. You should become the ra- you should become the mentor for the minion of the Hasidim in the marketplace of Meshachovitz. And this is what Rabbi Yosef did. He he sold his wagon, he sold his horse, he immediately became a wagon driver. And the previous Rebbe interesting concludes 
how Rabbi Yosef would have traveled to the Alter Rebbe even in his old age. He wouldn't, and he never traveled by a horse, even though he was a wagon driver. He would walk. He said to go to Jerusalem, for him going to visit the Rebbe, was like going to Jerusalem, go to Lubavitch, is going to Jerusalem. You don't want to share them. You, you, you walk. And that's what he did for his entire life. Anyway, so you see how the, how the benefit of his own soul, the benefit of Siddhartha Shama, Hashem had guided him to go away from his Torah and learning just to help one person with the Shuvah. So the same is true for each of us, that Hashem guides us to help others and to help, and then not just for the top others, but really for our own personal benefit, when Hashem gives us the opportunity to help one person do Teshuvah, and in a similar way for ourselves, Hashem gives us signs in our life to direct us to be the where we need to be and to be closer to Hashem. So, uh, Mr. Hashem, we're going to continue the Fabrang in Mr. Hashem at midnight. Meanwhile, and we should really decide tonight, night of Slichas, how to help another person get closer to Hashem, help ourselves realize we're not hopeless, and that Hashem has a plan to bring each of us closer to Him when He will sound the shofar, and every Jew in the world will hear the sound of the shofar and come to Hashem in Yerushalayim with Mashiach. A good vach.